back everybody today we've got um, hopefully a simple one this is actually a product that I've been meaning to kind of demo and play with for a while um, and that is this trip light ISO bar and these things I, I've got one in, in the package here are pretty fantastic. So this is the Ultrablock 428. This is a an AC surge suppressor with line noise filtering, direct plug-in. Um, and I basically use these anywhere I've got expensive equipment. Packaging's pretty boring, and honestly, I'm okay with that. So, you know, we've got the product name. We talk that it's a surge suppressor. We talk about that it does line noise filtering. There's this note about ultimate life insurance which is trip light will repair or replace this product and connected equipment against direct surge damage including direct lightning strikes for life and that's actually part of why i buy this so this thing let's go ahead and get it open pretty pretty simple looking device and it ends up being my first choice any place i've got equipment worth more than a few hundred bucks because these aren't cheap you know um, this particular unit is the ultra block 428 i think retails for i don't know like 20 bucks um but between 20 and 40 depending on which one there's a couple of models that are above this that are like 80 bucks that are multi-outlet and have some uh, additional ports on it, but but anyway, so this is the Ultra Block 428, and pretty simple, you know, line okay, fault protection present. It'll tell you if there's an issue with your power. You've got a little diagnostic section here that tells you if the green LED is lit. There's AC power. If the right LED is lit, full protection is available, which means that it is a ground. I like that they include this little protective cover on the ground. Um, and then red LED is improper or faulty wiring. I have tools that check for that, but having that included here is excellent. No LEDs, there's no power. All pretty standard, straightforward stuff. They're all serialized. You can register them on Triplight's website, which I usually do. Um, basically, Anywhere that I have like an expensive projector and a Chromecast or high-end TVs, um, you know, equipment that I'm going to be upset if it breaks at work, I put one of these in for a couple of reasons. The, the noise filtering is an excellent addition. I have found that the Chromecasts really do uh, benefit from that. And then... We've got commercial wiring, and it's in pretty good shape, but on the off chance there's something bad somewhere, um, this is an insurance policy. You know, I, I mentioned that they're, they're not cheap, but 20 bucks or so, 40 bucks or so, to protect four-figure equipment is a good investment. And I've never had to use that insurance policy so far, but I'm going to continue making that choice. Um, but these are, are pretty straightforward. So this plugs into the bottom outlet. So we've got a rubber insert here. We've got this it plugs into the bottom, which is actually the one thing I don't like, is that they don't plug into the top outlet and secure. Um, so it does leave the top outlet exposed. You could use that. And then they have this piece, which just slides in. There is a hole here that you insert this screw through. And then you remove the screw on the outlet cover plate and tighten it down so that it doesn't come loose. Um, because I've seen the way people yank on equipment and it would come loose without that. What I want to do here is let's get a look at what's inside and see just what makes some of this stuff tick and how it's built. So we have a 
metal shell. There's basically a glossy paper insert here that uh, goes over that hole for the screw. And then this is the, the guts of it. No microcontrollers or anything like that. The LEDs are just wired to the board and this is all discrete logic. Um, we've got a couple of diodes. There's one transistor here. Resistors, a couple of capacitors. L1 and L2. So this is all of our filtering. Huh. Um, are these color coded? Okay, so these are sleeved and insulated cables, but they're still color coded between the two halves of the board. I can see my neutral, my ground, my hot wire all in place. And then this appears to be soldered down with into the socket itself. So some of the functionality is inside the actual socket. Which sections are they attaching that way? So here is my all right so I can trace out where the grounds go here's my live wire I can see it connects to this capacitor that's interesting Unfortunately, the way this is attached, I can't get a good look at the back of the board to finish tracing everything out. Oh, and I'm blind. So, neutral out is right here, is this piece of copper that I can see goes to the outlet from there in. And then line out is right here, same thing. The copper loops through the board and then connects and is soldered to the socket. I can see solder here on this part of the connection. Um, not sure if that'll be at all visible on the camera. Okay, so that's how they do that. So they do all of that. And it looks like this section of the board, these diodes, these resistors are just for these LEDs. Um, this is all of our filtering. We've got a Carly MPX40-156. So this is actually a capacitor. Oh, duh, it says C1 on the board. Aha, okay. There are 15 amp fuses on both sides. That's what I was looking for. Those are buried inside the varistors. Okay, um, and of course they've got captain tape on these, making it kind of difficult to read what they are. I'm missing a fuse though. This is fuse three. That's fuse two. Where's fuse one? Somewhere in this design, there's a fuse, marked fuse one, white one, wire one, wire five, wire six, diode one, diode three, jumper two, capacitor one. They wouldn't. I 
light a fuse inside here, would they? Nope, no fuse there. I approve of the choice to further increase the level of protection by isolating all the wires that way. If there's a loose strand on anything, this would protect it. Well, I'm left with a bit of a mystery and a bit of understanding at how this thing is supposed to work. We've got plenty of filtering here. We've got these varistors. They're going to change their resistance based on incoming voltage and should help even some of that out. But what I'm left wondering is I have a fuse here and I have a fuse here. But the way they are marked, this is fuse 2, this is fuse 3, one of the fuses is just missing. Where did it go? Everything else adds up. V1, V2, V4, well, no. Everything else does not add up, because this is marked as V4 and this is marked as V6. I'm wondering if some of these jumpers may have been other components at one point. Because um, there's no real reason to have some of these. These could be just traces on the printed circuit board. They're not particularly thick jumpers. They're not carrying more current than the PCB itself is capable of handling. So I do wonder if, you know, maybe there was originally a fuse here where JP1 is. Physically, that's long enough. Um, other stuff that I see while we're in here, there is a mark, a couple of marks, that look like they were made by hand. That tells me that someone physically looked at this board and marked that it was good and in compliance with whatever requirements there were. Um, the PCB itself is white, which is an interesting note. It's not just regular green. And uh, it's lead free. Yay. Yeah, that's all right. So that's that's a quick look inside the ISO bar. It's not super complex. I expected, I don't know, a microcontroller, I guess, with the, the different LEDs, but that's really just driven by a couple of resistors and some diodes and one transistor here. Um, Pretty straightforward product. Like I said, I've been using these a ton at work. Um, I trust them with all of my high-end equipment. You know, let's take it apart you know, just a little further. The only thing that I don't like about these, that looking at the design a little bit further would probably be feasible for them to design around is that, and yeah, we can't see anything else taking this plate further off, which is a bummer. Uh, the one thing I'm not a huge fan of is the connection to the bottom outlet. So let's see, do I have an outlet in here that I can use as a, you know what? So when this is installed on a device, it doesn't cover both outlets. It hangs down and screws in and leaves the top outlet exposed. I don't like that because people will unplug things and then plug it into the top outlet if this ever broke for some reason, leaving my expensive equipment unprotected. Um, I also, although this is a fine mounting mechanism, it is generally sufficiently secure. Um, there have been a couple 
that because this top hole starts unthreaded, you actually thread into the aluminum by hand with the included screw. There's a couple that have kind of gotten cross-threaded and not as tight as I would have liked. They still stay in, they're still not going anywhere, but I would have felt better if they had screwed in a little tighter. And uh, just having a straight old through hole and giving me a long retaining screw, I mean, we're talking, what, two inches or so for that, two and a half would have solved that, would have made that problem go away. So, and honestly, that's not the end of the world. I'm going to keep buying the Ultrablock 428s and probably some of the bigger ones at some point. I haven't had a ton of need for one yet uh, because they work. They have continued to keep all my equipment happy. They've filtered out noisy lines that I knew were causing issues. Um, so they're a, a functional piece of equipment. All this filtering is not just for show. It actually does what it says it'll do. And if you work in an environment where you have equipment that, oh my God, this is a $50 surge suppressor. Yeah, it's more expensive than the $10, you know, Lowe's power strip you might get that if more than 15 amps goes through, that it, it'll trip. It also covers a lot more damage than some of those do. In fact, does it, does it say here what the dollar value limit is on the warranty? It must be listed on their website. It doesn't actually, it, it t says that it's limited to the policy limit, but doesn't say what the policy limit is on the included documentation so which is a bummer usually it's tens of thousands of dollars on something like this anyway so I'm gonna put it back together off camera that's a whole lot of talking about a, a two outlet surge suppressor here lastly I want to say that uh, this was purchased at retail this was not sent in by trip light I have been meaning to take one of these apart for a while and show it on camera. And we ordered a new batch of these for some equipment at work, so I decided to take a peek inside and see what makes it tick. Or not tick, as it may be, since it's all solid state. Uh, finally, I want to thank Electrix for providing our opening and closing themes. I want to thank Anyone who helps support Pocketables, be it on Patreon or Amazon affiliate link, by using our Amazon affiliate links, it is support like that that helps make videos like this possible. And finally, thank you for watching.